so we said the last time that there are two ways of looking at the cross of Christ, and one is as a defeat, as a humiliation, as suffering, as weakness, death, um, <clears throat> and also as a victory. Uh, you should remember that the the victory over sin and the victory over death was not the resurrection, but the crucifixion. The resurrection is a sign of Christ's victory over death. That's important. <clears throat> so, and then we also said that the Eucharist, well, the Eucharist can be looked at in two different ways. One is a sacrifice. And the other as the sacrament. So it can be seen in its sacrificial aspect, which is the reenactment of the passion of Christ. <clears throat> and for this reason, you have the two consecrations, the sacramental separation of his body and blood. Or if uh, there, if the the Holy Eucharist existed only to keep present the body of Christ. There would be no need to have the two consecrations. So it's not merely a sacrament. It's primarily a sacrifice. And the sacrament flows from it. It is this sacrificial aspect of the Holy Eucharist, the perpetuation of the sacrifice of Christ in the sacrifice of the Mass, which we celebrate prim primarily on Holy Thursday. in the midst of our sorrow, as we watch in our mind's contemplation, the separation of our Lord's body and blood on the hill of Calvary. So in, it's placed in the midst of all of the sorrow of our Lord's death. So the emphasis is there on, on the reenactment of Calvary. <clears throat> and that's why the adoration that is due to the Blessed Sacrament is not given at that time. In other words, not totally. And that's why you have the Feast of Corpus Christi. And that's why you have the Altar of Repose, which is the uh, representing the our Lord's agony in the garden, and everything is is geared toward the the passion and the, the sacrifice. But then there is the Holy Eucharist as sacrament. As the Holy Eucharist is a reenactment of the passion and death of Christ, that is, of his humiliation, his suffering, and his weakness, so does the Holy Eucharist, which is Christ, have the victory of the cross of which it is a reenactment. <clears throat> the victory of Christ is that he regain for himself that he buy back by his blood the sinful human race. He has paid the price and he has won the battle. And we are now his. So the whole human race belongs to him not only as he is God,
not only as he is God-man, but also as he is Savior. And that's why we have the Feast of Christ the King showing that all humanity belongs to him as the Savior of humanity. And Pope Pius XI is quite explicit concerning that in his encyclical. It is by the Holy Eucharist that our Lord takes possession of his kingdom. <clears throat> the apostles go and preach the gospel to all nations. The church preaches the gospel to all nations. And when the gospel is preached, people are baptized. And when they are baptized, they may receive the Holy Eucharist. And it is in receiving the Holy Eucharist, that, that he takes possession of his kingdom. It is the ultimate possession of the soul by Christ. It is one thing for a great conqueror to win a battle it is another thing for him to possess what he has conquered. And there's, there have been many battles won that have not been followed up by a conquest, by a possession. Many battles. Our Lord takes possession of us in the Holy Eucharist by uniting himself to us in the most intimate way conceivable. When we consume him worthily, he takes us to himself and we are assimilated to him. So when you eat ordinary food, you assimilate it to yourself. But when you consume the Holy Eucharist, he assimilates you to him. Why? Because he is of a higher order than you are. So this is the you might say the ultimate act of the mystical body. The church is the mystical body. So his union with the members of the church in the Holy Eucharist is the ultimate way in which uh, the, the mystical body is affected. E-F-F-E-C-T-E. -F -F -E And that is why the Holy Eucharist is the symbol of the unity of the church, as St. Thomas Aquinas says. And that is why una cum is so important. Because the Holy Eucharist must be offered in the unity of the church. Otherwise, that symbolism is destroyed. He also takes possession of his kingdom by means of the Holy Eucharist in this sense through his perpetual divine presence, he demands a perpetual adoration.
through his holy Catholic Church, the gospel will be preached everywhere and in every part of the world. The real presence of Christ will demand the love, respect, and adoration of the faithful. So even apart from receiving him, this love, respect, and adoration of the faithful for the Holy Eucharist is a possession of his kingdom. What a beautiful world this would be if the whole world were on its knees before our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Just think about that. The evils of faithlessness and debauchery would be burned away by the Son of the Divine Presence of Christ in the Holy Sacrament. We therefore celebrate the holy victory of Christ on the cross on the Feast of Corpus Christi. So the church has the freedom, we might say, to give to the Blessed Sacrament everything that is due to it on that feast day. It must hold back on Holy Thursday. So on Corpus Christi, the persecutors and the torturers are gone. Gone are the Pharisees and the chief priests. Gone is our sorrow. Gone are our tears. We look upon our Savior, our Redeemer, our Victor. We look upon him on our altars, the same Christ, true God and true man, who sits at the right hand of the Father. It's such a, a sublime thing that somebody said that if God had not revealed the real presence, no one would have believed it. If it had been the invention of men, no one would have believed it. That God would come so close to us as to be received by us, to be touched by us, to be handled and carried around by priests and left in tabernacles. You're, you're looking at the, an, an infinite furnace of divine love when you see our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. His humiliation there is greater than his humiliation at Bethlehem, even his humiliation on the cross. And so on Corpus Christi, also this coming Sunday, which is in a way an extension of Corpus Christi. We bow down and adore him. We worship him. We ask him to take possession of our souls, to take possession of our homes and take possession of our nations, especially on the Feast of Christ the King.
The and this brings us to the purpose of human human life. The purpose of human life is union with God. It's the reason why we exist is to be united to God and to be happy with him forever in heaven. It's the first question in the catechism. We have no other purpose. We do not exist to make money. We do not exist to pursue pleasure. We do not exist to expend our time in leisure. We do not exist to fulfill ourselves in a career. That's not, those are not the purposes of our existence. Those things might be necessary for our existence, etc. But they are not the primary purpose of our existence. All of those things will pass away. They are accessory, ancillary to the primary purpose of our existence, which is union with God. Sanctification consists in union with God. We exist for the single purpose of being united supernaturally to God. And every other act that we perform must be ordered toward this union with God. Otherwise, it is a sin. Everything else we love, must we must love in God and for God. That means we must love it in the way that God wants us to love it and to the extent that God loves us to want and wants us to love it. Every other love. When we understand this fundamental truth about the purpose of our existence, we now understand the importance of First Holy Communion. That day is so important. It used to be, before Pius X, you didn't receive First Holy Communion until you were about 12. And St. Pius X felt it was best that little children receive it. But I, I, the, uh, I think if you were 12 years old, you might understand the importance of it more than when you're seven. I don't think little kids really understand the importance of what they're doing when, when they're that young. And it is the most important day of your life. Holy Communion is our union with God. It is therefore the most important act of our lives. And there's really nothing more that we could say about it than that. For no matter what else happens to you, whether you, you know, what, what, per, what career you pursue, whether you get married, whether you're single, whether you're religious, whether you're a priest, that First Holy Communion is the beginning, really, of your spiritual life. S 
so important is this union with God that the church commands that the Holy Eucharist be received at the moment of our deaths. So the only day more important to us than, than the day of our first Holy Communion is the day of our last Holy Communion. Remember what St. Thomas Aquinas said. What should we hope for most in life? A good death. All right.